Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and we got a great tutorial today. We're gonna create this awesome particle sequence. I'm very excited to be bringing this to you guys today. Uh, however, you will need to plug in strap code form and optical flares from Video Copilot. However, if you don't have the time to create this, or if you don't have the plugins, you can purchase this template, the seven slide template from our website. Uh, we have seven different dynamic slides, and they're all unique so go ahead and check that out that link will be in the description of the video but let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial so i already have a new composition in here called tut i already have some text in here which says beautiful particles so let's just get right into it so type in your text do some cool little design we have a, a bold uh style up here at the top and a light style at the bottom and what we're going to do is go up to layer new solid and we'll start with the form particle so we'll type in form and we'll click OK. And then we'll also go up to layer new camera. And I'm using the 50 millimeter preset and you can click OK. And then what we're gonna do is go to our solid layer down here, go up to effect trap code form. So here's our effect. And if we go grab the camera tools at the top, you can see that we can also uh, move this into 3D space, which is cool. But let's get into the base form with the effect. And let's set the X to maybe about like 1400 or so and maybe set the Y to 1080. And we'll set the size Z to, down just to zero. And we'll go to the particles X and Y, and we'll set this to 140 for both of these uh, parameters. And we're looking good. And we'll set the particles and Z down to one. And now we just kind of have this straight uh, plane over here. And we'll go to the X, Y, and Z rotation. And this will kind of just do a little bit of variation a little bit later if you just go ahead and duplicate this and uh, you create some other sequences. But we'll set this to like negative 90. Do like a negative 10 and maybe like 40. And then we'll go right into the particle settings and we'll set the sear feather down to zero and we'll change the color to whatever color that you want to do it. We'll do it like maybe a, a nice blue color like this. We'll click OK. And we have not really nothing going on. So let's go right into the disperse and twist. And this is where this is really going to come to life. So we can increase the twist and you see we're starting to create some very interesting loops here. And we can, of course, grab our camera and rotate around it, whatever you want to do. So maybe we'll go, like, we'll aim our camera right in the middle of our twist here. And we can continue to increase the twist. So we'll do, like, maybe 40 for the twist. So I'll set the disperse to about 56 over here. And we'll add a keyframe for disperse. We'll go to the end of our animation, which will be about 10 seconds. And I'll probably set this to, like, 64. Okay, and then let's go up to Effect Stylize Glow. And this will help, help punch up the effect a little bit, but let's set the uh, glow threshold to 35%. We'll set the glow radius to about 76, and we'll punch up the glow intensity to maybe about six or so. And that should be good. So we'll go to our camera properties, and we can go to the camera options first before we do any positioning. So let's go into the aperture, maybe set this up to like 55 or so. And that should get a little bit more focus here. But if we go to the focus distance, of course, not much is going to happen here because the particles are really far away. So if we grab our tools at the top. We grab the track Z camera tool and we zoom in. Uh, you see that we are able to see some of these particles a little bit closer. What we really want to do is be able to create a lot of camera depth here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the zoom on this camera to probably about 300. And what's going to happen, the particle is going to be shoot, shot very far in the distance, but if we go ahead and just zoom in with our track camera tool to about uh, 400 or so, you know, we'll probably keep it around like 177. So we'll have a little bit of particles going on here. And what we're going to do is we're also going to grab the XY tool. We can kind of move things over a little bit. You see, we kind of have like these nice little creases in here, and that's going to create some separation once we duplicate the particles. So we'll consider this here. We'll add a keyframe for position, and we'll go to the end of our animation, which we'll have about like, you know, 10 seconds. And what we'll do is we'll kind of do like a little bit of this XY position over here, kind of like that. And if we want, we can also maybe track out of it. So we kind of zoom out of the particles by a little bit. And we're looking good. Let's go add a keyframe for focus distance. And let's move forward in time to maybe about four seconds. And let's just add another keyframe right there. Let's go back to our original keyframe over here. And maybe we'll do like 400 for the focus distance of the first keyframe. And I invite you to mess with the blur level a little bit so we can bring it down a little bit so we get a little bit more focus. But this is a really cool look and we can continue to build this out by a touch. So let's also go to our form layer down here and let's go to edit, duplicate. 
and we're going to change the size X to probably about 800, uh, size Y to 600. And let's quickly just change the color real fast to like a light red or so. Do like a strawberry red sort of thing, like this, whatever color this would be. Click OK. And we're starting to see the particles a little bit. And we'll go back up to the base form. We'll set the particles in X to 120 and the particles in Y to 120 as well. And we come here to the rotation and we can just go ahead and change that as well. So we have a little bit of variation and it's not exactly the same. All right, and we can also go to the center X, Y and move this over a little bit. So I'll probably move this over to about 500 or so for the X and we'll go to the Y and bring this down as well. So let's create a little bit of variation in the particles and then we'll go back to the size random and set this to 100. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer and we'll call it distort. We'll go up to effect, distort, optics compensation and we'll set up the field of view to probably about 80 points 70 there and we'll also check on the reverse lens distortion and you see the image is going to be warped a little bit now we want this layer to be underneath our text layer so make sure this layer is underneath your text and just right above the form layer looking good and let's also add another adjustment layer and we'll call this one glow and color and we'll go up to effect stylize glow again we'll just add like another basic glow effect to punch us up even further and we'll go up to effect color correction curves so if you're unhappy with the color choices over here you can go to like the red channel and you can start to change the colors a little bit so go to the green channel maybe bring this down and go to the blue channel and we can and just play with the curves here it'll kind of give you just a, a different look of your particles it'll make it a little bit more saturated and cool I'm a little bit unhappy with our camera position at the moment. And basically the point of interest accidentally got affected on my end. So make sure to right click that layer and reset it just in case the point of interest was affected. And if we want to get say a huge field of particles and be able to see it all, let's go to the Z position here for our position. And I'll set this to like 400. And we'll be able to see a ton more particles. And that looks a lot more interesting. Make sure to go to the last keyframe and to make some adjustments to that. So we'll do like 450. We're going to go ahead and make the text a little bit better and blend well with this. So we're going to go to layer, layer styles, and we're going to add gradient overlay. And we'll go into our gradient overlay. And some of my settings already got copied over. So let's go ahead and just reset this real fast. And click on the word edit gradient. And what we're going to do is go to the first color stop. And yours is going to be black and white. We're going to bring the first color stop to a nice, you know, red, uh, light red there, like a peach. Go to the second color stop and we'll do a darker peach color as well. Click OK. And of course, play with the angle of this. So that'll all depend. And let's go to the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe for angle and go to the end of our animation and kind of just make it noticeably where that text will animate. So I think it's a really cool thing you could do. So let's go to effects and presets, go to animation presets, go to text, go to blurs, and we'll go to the beginning of our timeline. We'll add the evaporate preset to our text over here and we'll hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And we'll go ahead and select both of these offset keyframes, right click them, keyframe assistance, time reverse keyframes. And we'll drag this last keyframe all the way out to like four seconds or so. So we have a very long transition. And we'll make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And we'll go up to layer, new solid, and we'll call it element 3D. And we'll go up to effect video copilot optical flares. I was just trying to pull a fast one there. And let's go to options. And we'll go ahead and click clear all. We'll add a glow and a streak. We'll go to our streak. We'll go to the stretch property. And we'll bring down the Y value of stretch. And we'll create this very thin stretch mark like this. And we can change the color of this. So maybe we'll do like a, a complementary color. We'll do like purple like that. We'll click OK. And we can... Trans we can set the blend mode to add, or we can set the render mode on to transparent. It's up to you. I'll add, like do an add. And we can put this right in the middle of our comp right here, right in between our text like this. And we'll bring down the brightness to maybe about 70. And then we'll go to like three seconds here. We'll add a keyframe for brightness. And we'll hit you on our keyboard, go to the beginning of our timeline. And we'll set this up to like, you know, 1000. Maybe not so much 1000, maybe like 500 or so. Just one like that, we have this nice transition. 
And we can make the last keyframe here an easy ease keyframe. And then let's also go to the flicker property. And let's set up the speed to probably about 30 and the amount to maybe 40. So we'll have a little bit of a flicker going on. It looks nice. And then we go to end of our animation, which maybe at like eh, six seconds or so, we'll add a keyframe for the brightness value. Go to the end here and we can jump this up to you know, almost the white screen over here. And then of course, let's go back into our text property, hit you and your keyboard, and let's just copy the offset keyframe if we want to actually bring this offset keyframe back in a little bit to maybe like three seconds. So it's a little bit uh, quicker. Copy those keyframes, paste them, right click them, keyframe assistance, time reverse keyframe, and we'll bring these keyframes in as well. So, all right, and we're looking good. And we'll do one last thing before we are done here. Let's go up to layer new null object. Go to the beginning of your timeline and let's parent the text layer and our optical flares layer, which I should have named it element 3D. Just parent it to the null object and we'll hit S on a keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for it. Go to the end of your animation and we'll go set the scale down to maybe like 107. So the text will just be moving a little bit coming towards the camera and also the flare and it'll look nice. And then now that we're done, make sure to toggle switch the modes and turn on motion blur for your particle layers, your text, um, and just don't do it for your flare layer. And make sure to turn it on at the top. And after our render, this is a, what we have in a very nice transition into these particles. And we have our text, I like it. So I hope you guys do too. If you guys did enjoy this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.